have constantly said in this country. Until Nigerians get to a stage to say, no, you can't be minister of power if it is generator that is powering your whole house and you have not provided generator for every other person. You cannot be minister of housing if you are not staying in a government apartment. You cannot be minister of health if you do not have your treatment in this country. You cannot be minister of education if your children are all schooling outside. You can't. Why? Because human beings have self-interest. That is what is called self-interest. If his children are going to go to the government secondary school, he will make sure that government secondary schools are well taken care of. If his family is going to go to the general hospital next door, he will make sure that general hospital is well taken care of. But as long as leaders do not share in the plight of the people, as long as leaders can fly to the US, to UK, to Dubai for their health care and condemn the people to this uh, kind of conditions here, as long as that is the situation, we are not moving anywhere. So Nigerians will have to rise up and say, no, you can't be our minister for education because your children are not schooling here. So when you have a situation, rather than the people making sacrifice and demonstrating how much sacrifice you have made for the people, then we say, yes, you be our leader because you have suffered for us. You have denied yourself legitimate pleasures for our sake. That is what used to qualify people for leadership. Now, we have people who conquer us. They conquer us. Then they take the resources of our land to reconquer us and remain there and it becomes difficult to move them out of power. But someday, someday, as I always say, the revenge of the poor is at the corner. The revenge of the poor is coming. And that one, you will not be able to do anything about it. You can have your jeep. You can have your generators. You can have everything bulletproof. But the revenge of the poor, it happened in France. It happened in Russia. It has just happened in Sudan. It will happen here. Unless you, we change our course, we will end up where we are heading. And where we are heading now, is a, unfortunately, it's a violent revolution. That's where we are heading. Unless we change our course. And I am not just talking of leaders in the national level. I'm not talking of presidents and governors and senators and house of rebel. I'm talking of all of us who are privileged. I hope you know. And many of us here, most of us here are privileged. What is our concern for the people next door? For the poor people next door, what is our concern? What is even our concern for our megadis? For those who do petty work for us, what is our concern? If that is not happening, it means we are failing as shepherds in our responsibility of being shepherds. I hope you know that in this Africa, in this Nigeria, there never used to be a distinction between the neighborhood of the rich and the neighborhood of the poor. I hope you know. I hope you know that poor people and rich people used to live together. That's the heart of the blacksmith. That's the heart of the king. That's the heart of it used to be together. It's a completely new terrible thing that has happened to us. And people are, are enjoying it. They are enjoying it. They ask you what part of town you live in. And that immediately you tell them the part of town you live in, they, they know, you know your status. And I am saying, by the time you segregate society, what, do you, what used to be called apartheid, and Nigerians were in the forefront of fighting apartheid, where the white man said, look, you blacks, you live there, we white, we live here. That is exactly what we are doing to our fellow black people. Exactly. And you know, it makes it easier when revolution comes. I hope you know. It makes it easier. It means the poor people know where to go. And I challenge the, the, the authorities in our cities. I challenge town planners that this is not how to make plan towns. Let us start working. If we want our peace and safety and security in the future, let us start working on what is called integrated cities. 
integrated estates, integrated settlements. If we want peace, the one we are on now, you will never have peace. We need to have integrated cities where the not so rich and the rich and so on live together and share. So that the children that are growing up privileged will know they are privileged when they see next door the other children. And they go to the same school, by the way. They go to the same school, by the way. When I was in primary school, everybody went to that primary school. We never knew that anyone was rich or anyone was poor. And that helped us. That helped us. But the society we are creating today, I am saying it is not sustainable. What did I call it? It's not sustainable. We can't run a society like this for the next hundred years. It's not possible. So if you have a future, if you dream of a future for your children and grandchildren, you need to join me in shouting against this. If you dream of a future for your children and grandchildren, you need to join me in saying, this is inappropriate. This is dangerous. This is destructive. Like I said, it is not our high walls. It is not our barbed wires. It is not our electrical, electri electrified fences that will save us. What will save us is that the poor should be included at the dining table. Yes, the poor and the handicapped and the widow and the orphan, they should be included at the dining table. That is what will save us.